This section will talk about displaying quantitative data. And the two things that we're going to talk about today are going to be making a dot plot and making a histogram. So first of all, the dot plot, you are going to look at the numbers that you have. So here I have um, the amounts of sodium of 16 different brands of pizza. And we're going to start by doing our horizontal axis and... I'm just going to label it as being sodium. And what you need to do first is figure out what your scale is going to be. So when you're working with quantitative data, it doesn't really matter if you start from zero or not. In this case, actually starting from zero would make a kind of weird and difficult to draw dot plot. So I'm going to start slightly lower than my lowest number. And in this case, my lowest number, I believe, is 570. So I'm going to start below that. And I'm going to end above my highest number, which is 870. So I'm thinking that probably going from like 550 to 900 would be a good way to do it. So from there, you can go by 50s, you can go by 25s, you can even start at like 500 and go by 100s. I don't really care how you do it, but just make sure that you get a good scale that includes all values. So I'm going to start at 550 and go by 50s. And from there, you're just going to put dots that represent each of your values. So my first one I have is 580. So I know 575 is right in between here. So 580 is just going to go right next to that. The next one I have, 740, is going to go close to 750. So you're just going to put dots in. Then I have 850. And I have another one at 850, so I'm going to stack those two right on top of each other. So then I have an 870, which is going to go just to the left of the halfway point between 850 and 900. And I actually have another 850. So you're just going to keep on putting things in this way throughout the whole thing. Dot plots, I think, are... They're among the most, like, user-friendly things to make. They don't take a lot of work. You don't have to do any calculations. However, they do uh, take a little bit of time. You'll find that most of the time in this class, you're not going to be spending loads of time drawing lots of pictures. You are going to be spending more time actually analyzing the pictures and looking at looking at them to look for patterns, which we'll talk about shortly. So this is what my dot plot looks like. It's not perfect. Hopefully yours looks a little better since you're not drawing with a stylus on an iPad. But just do the best you can and do not forget to label. I don't care how neat it is. Um, as long as I can read it and as long as you label it. So labeling, once again, in this case means both uh, writing out what you're looking at, which in this case is sodium. Also make sure that you write the numbers below. Make sure that things like these go by 50s or they go by 10s. They have to, you have to have even intervals between them. So that's also important. So the next thing we're going to do is make what we, we call a histogram. So a histogram is kind of going to look like a bar chart. The only differences from a bar chart are, first of all, that it has to do with quantitative data and not categorical. The second difference is that we're going to have bars, but they're going to touch each other. That way we can see if there's any gaps in it. If there's a gap, that means that you're missing a number in that small area. 
So on the surface, a histogram might look like a bar chart, but actually it's closer to a dot plot than you would expect it to be. So what we're going to do is we are going to start by making our x-axis, which is going to be the sodium levels. And I am going to start once again with 550. And I'm also going to still go by 50s. But now what I'm going to do is I am going to see how many values fall into each of these intervals. So for example, I'm going to start with 550. Anything that's greater than or equal to 550 and less than 600 is going to go into my first category. So in that area, I'm going to have two things. And it's always a good idea to kind of count out how many you have before you actually make your y-axis. And on the y-axis, we usually label it with something like frequency, which means how often it occurs. So in this case, between 550 and 600, I actually have um, two things. I have 580 and I have 570, so I'm going to start with those two. Since I know that there's two of them, I am going to draw my first bar up to two. Now you're going to do the same thing with everything else. So same thing with 600 to 650. There are also, there are actually three things here, and so you're going to keep going like that. So um, 650 to 700, this type always is a little bit confusing for people because we actually have one exactly at 700. As long as you're consistent throughout your whole chart, it doesn't matter if you do put the 700 in the one on the right or the one on the left. Since I'm saying that um, this is going to include everything starting at 650 and less than 700, I'm not going to include it in this middle section right here that I'm going to do. So I'm only going to include these three things. But if you did it the other way, you're not going to lose points for that. Just make sure that you're consistent throughout the whole entire thing. So the 700 is going to go to the stuff to the right of the 700 with the 740. And actually, I have nothing between 800 and 850. So what's going to happen there is I'm going to have a gap in my graph. That's completely fine that you have that. So that's going to be the only place that it doesn't touch. So then this is my histogram. It gives us some very useful information about approximately where all of our sodium levels are. And it's also probably the thing that you would most likely see like on a website or when you're reading the news. The one thing I do want you to notice is that a good habit to get into when you're making it is to kind of somehow like mark every single one that you used as you use it so you don't forget anything because I found that I tend to always forget things if I don't do this. So that's a good habit to do when you're making these.